Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about an interesting object that you're about to see in front of you known as Crab Nebula with another object in the middle of it known as the Crab Pulsar. We're going to discuss these two objects and I'm going to tell you all about their creation and we're also going to recreate them using Universe Sandbox 2 and talk about why this object is so important historically. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So we're currently about uh, 6,900 light years away from um, our own solar system and we're looking at a nebula known as the Crab Nebula with the Crab Pulsar right there in the middle. This particular nebula is not actually very old, it's just under a thousand years old and the reason we know that is, and the, actually the reason why it's so important historically is because in uh, um, a year 1054 AD uh, there was basically a very very large explosion in the sky, this was a supernova from the previous star that used to be here, the progenitor star that was uh, in the location that where this neutron star is right now, and it then created this incredibly beautiful supernova that was visible for like two years um, in the skies across the world. Now because this was 1054, Europe was actually in the dark ages, so uh, people probably noticed it, but they probably thought it was a bad omen, so they never really talked about it. But a variety of Chinese and also a variety of Japanese astronomers did mention um, this particular supernova in their um, astronomical texts. And it was also mentioned uh, in at least one document from the um, Arabic astronomers as well. So this was a, a very, very easily visible and well-observed phenomenon in 1054. But obviously back then people had no idea what's going on and they thought it was some sort of a bad omen, probably related to gods being angry at them. Now since this is actually a nebula, uh, this means that it's basically a kind of a cloud that's very very bright in the sky and this is actually what it looks like in various spectra, including visual light, infrared and so on. Um, it, it's a very very beautiful nebula, it's kind of hard to see um, without a powerful telescope, but if you have binoculars you can usually see it somewhat, you can kind of see the colors that are similar to what you see on the screen right now. Um, and uh, this nebula is also widely studied and widely used for various purposes, including um, things like uh, studying other objects in our solar system. So, for example, when the moon of Saturn, known as Titan, passed in front of this nebula, we were able to use the uh, known X-ray emissions from this nebula to study the atmosphere of Titan. So, this was actually one of the first attempts to study the atmospheric composition of Titan, which was actually a pretty original way of doing it. And um, this pulsar that you uh, you can see in the middle right there, this crab pulsar, is also very well known and we actually know its age up to basically um, a day. So uh, because the uh, supernova was observed uh, by the Chinese astronomers and recorded in a lot of detail, we know exactly when it happened. So it happened in 1054, uh, we know um, almost a day when it happened, so we can usually use this information to study the exact progression of various pulsars because we know how old this pulsar is and how it changed over time. Now let's actually take a look at it, we're going to approach it and you'll get to see what it actually looks like and how bright it really is in reality. Now, uh, Krebs pulsar was actually one of the first pulsars discovered uh, back in the 1960s and it was identified as a pulsar after a very long study of trying to understand what's going on here and people realize that these are not just stars, these are so-called neutron stars that I'm going to actually slow down here. Uh, this is, um, we just slow down time so we can actually see it spin and we're going to also decrease magnitude so we can actually see what's going on here. And there it is. There is a beautiful pulsar. A crab pulsar that is actually still spinning relatively fast. This is even with um, a very, very, very high time deceleration that I just used. But if you were to look at this in normal time, this is what it would look like. This is how fast it actually spins, emitting quite a lot of um, various X-rays and a lot of other uh, really highly energized energy that is usually being um, directed toward us. And of course, other star systems in this and that direction. So there's really, really strong um, jets that basically come out of this pulsar. Now, we're going to come closer to it just to take a look at it as well. And maybe even try to land on it because we can totally do this in space engine. Um, so this pulsar is actually ridiculously bright. It's about 75,000 times brighter than our own sun. And it is very, very, very powerful as well. Um, and here it is right in the middle. Now this is of course with decreased luminosity. So in reality it would be a lot brighter. This is actually 
uh, with almost the lowest luminosity in the game. So yeah, this, this is a very, very, very bright and blindingly scary object. If you stand on the top of it, this is what the universe would look like. Because of the um, density and because of the high gravity on the surface, you would not really be able to see the sky the way you see it um, from Earth. But uh, let's actually go back to the normal luminosity so you can see how bright it is. And I'm going to do this a little bit slower so that you don't go accidentally blind if I press the button by itself. And here we go. So this might not actually represent the actual brightness because this is a video game. Uh, but this is kind of what uh, the blue shift looks like from this location if you approach this uh, neutron stun relatively close. We're going to actually escape this area and here we go. This is, this is a little bit more realistic in terms of brightness. So that's essentially the pulsar and um, this used to be uh, a, a very large star about um, uh, a thousand years ago that basically went supernova and created the nebula. And you can actually see some of the um, parameters of this particular pulsar right here on the left side. So it shows you the temperature, it also shows you the fact that it spins really fast. As a matter of fact, it spins something like once every 33 milliseconds. Um, and uh, we also have its age, close to about a thousand years, maybe just a little bit under that. And of course, other parameters like diameter, which is 29,000 kilometers, um, maybe several times bigger than Earth and um, temperature of 99,000 degrees Celsius. So that's essentially the pulsar. And uh, let's, let's go back to Earth for a second, just so you can actually see what it looks like from there. And so there it is. This is uh, what Crab Nebula and also Crab Pulsar look like um, in the sky. You can kind of increase the magnitude just to see it a little bit better. It kind of looks like a very, very dim star from this distance. Unless, of course, you start increasing uh, exposure here and realize that this is a little bit more diffuse than a regular star and does look like an actual nebula. So let's actually see how this, this uh, particular nebula was born. And we're going to use Universe Sandbox 2 to try to recreate this phenomenon. And so let's imagine this is actually the year 1054 or maybe 1053, right before the supernova. So somewhere out there, there's Earth uh, with basically us still completely technologically not advanced, but the uh, Chinese and Japanese astronomers are watching the skies and writing everything down. So it all probably started with a very, very massive star, somewhere between 9 to 10 um, times more massive than our own sun. So maybe a star like Betelgeuse or possibly a star like Spica. Uh, let's pick Spica because it's 10 uh, masses of sun. Um, and this is actually a very young star. It's only about 13 million years um, old. But at some point it's going to get very, very old and uh, basically do the whole supernova thing and then of course also create um, a similar kind of a nebular cloud let's just change this to about two billion years and i believe if i actually disable and re-enable this there you go there is a supernova uh, so this causes a supernova to um, initiate the explosion and what's left behind is essentially a pulsar and this, of course, happened as, uh, something like a thousand years ago when this star essentially reached the end of its uh, main sequence life. And due to basically the lack of nuclear reaction on the inside, uh, the star starts collapsing. And as it collapses, a lot more energy is released and it would then basically initiate supernova. If this star was actually more massive, it would probably create a black hole. Uh, or possibly a theoretical concept known as a quark star. If this star was a lot less massive, it would either um, initiate a nebular uh, or planetary nebula, a very simple sort of um, expansion where it creates a planetary nebula, which is not as energetic as this, or just turn into a white dwarf like our, our own sun will. And then it would stay as a white dwarf for trillions of years. Uh, now, this particular supernova actually looks a little bit different from... Uh, what I expected from basically what uh, Crab Nebula looks like. So maybe we we'll can try this again, but this time with Betelgeuse, just to see if we can create a slightly different uh, looking um, supernova. So let's actually zoom out of Betelgeuse and change its age to about, I don't know, 10 billion years and initiate a supernova as well. And so here we go. I think this is going to create a slightly different looking supernova um, and possibly the one that looks a little bit more like... There you go. That looks a little bit more like the Crab Nebula. So a little bit uh, more similar, similar colors as well. Maybe slightly different shape. 
But inside of this region, it's actually going to be a pulsar. And this is what the actual pulsar would look like in comparison to the original size of the star. As a matter of fact, it's only about uh, 28 kilometers in diameter, or in radius, sorry. And so it's a very, very tiny object, and um, it spins very, very fast, and it produces produces these really, really powerful uh, streams going basically up and down. But what is kind of interesting about this particular system, uh, specifically about the nebula itself and the pulsar, is that if you were to actually add up the entire mass of the pulsar and also the actual supernova material as well, it doesn't seem to give us the required mass. As a matter of fact, it doesn't add up to even about five solar masses. So the scientists, they are trying to figure out where is this missing mass that's supposed to be here that would actually initiate the um, supernova needed to produce this type of pulsar along with this type of a supernova with the material that we observe on the inside. So currently we're not exactly sure um, where the missing mass is because we're missing something like 60% of it if not if not even more Okay, so having played with the game a little bit more I actually was able to recreate a slightly more accurate representation of what actually may have happened here So here's a crab pulsar that actually does have those emissions I was talking about I'm going to show them to you in a second and the supernova that is basically going to expand really uh, really slowly but actually kind of fast at a velocity of about um, 1500 kilometers per second and it's going to escape as the crab pulsar starts uh, spinning around and creating a variety of really 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 cool effects you're going to see them as soon as the supernova kind of dissipates from here and here we go and if i were to zoom into the pulsar there are those um jets that i mentioned before basically um sending a huge amount of radiation and various particles this way that way and a lot of these particles do uh, or a lot of this radiation does actually reach our own planet earth and that's a, that's what we can actually detect and see um, from a really 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 far away distance and so essentially this is how crab pulsar was uh, born uh, back in 1054 ad this is what uh, the chinese and other asian astronomers were able to see in the sky but something uh, that we need to remember is that this actually is of course after the light has already reached Earth, and the pulsar is about 6,900 light, light years away from us, meaning that um, it's technically already something like 7,000 years older than what it appears to us from our own planet Earth. So if we actually were to move here using some sort of faster than the light travel and were to explore this location, it would look uh, slightly different already. So in other words, when the light first reached us in 1054, uh, this pulsar was already 6,900 years old. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about this in, in this video, and I wanted to recreate uh, this amazing pulsar and, of course, uh, the Crab Nebula itself using Universe Sandbox 2 and um, talk about it using Space Engine as well. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video, and possibly leave a comment below about other pulsars or other nebula that you would like me to talk about. I'll see you guys in the next video, game you later, and as always, bye-bye. And if I were to slow down time here, you would see that this pulsar is actually spinning in a very peculiar manner really, 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 really fast. And there you go. There is that spin. That's what I was actually looking for. And it does this every 33 milliseconds.